We bring up Jason Matthews, Matthews for that. Big round of applause. Woo! Simple homework. If you have not signed in, well, homework, don't please sign in. If you have not, you can sign in through our department. Anyways, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Jason Matthews, President and CEO of Matthews Financial and Insurance Solutions. We are an insurance and retirement planning firm. Just give you guys a little background about myself. Let me just give you a little background about myself. I was with Mirror Clyde, started with him in October 2004, and I opened up my own brokerage firm back in 2009 in the midst of recession. Now, if you guys don't remember 2009, it seems like businesses were failing. The unemployment rate was at 15, 16%, when it's actually was probably about like 35%. But in the midst of retiring our business, we had to have a great growth at that time. And what we've really been specializing in lately or over the last couple of years has been retirement planning and tax strategies with retirement planning. Uh, with it. And so the point is, and with that right now, what we do offer is we offer health insurance, life insurance, right, long term care, income replacement, and most importantly, what we're going to focus on tonight is retirement planning. And just give you guys some important reasons. The reason that me and Steve do work together on a lot of things is because a true plan, even if you're doing real estate or financial planning, you need to work with a team. And the team is so more and so effective because if you do one thing, you don't have the right plan with it or a right team, it could be the pits and demise of any empire if you don't have the correct team with you. So me and Steve, I'm a financial planner, I do an insurance broker, but at the same time, we are a team where we work with our clients on a continuous basis on making sure that we get the right plan and the right situation for you. Because everybody's situation is different. You want to make sure that you have the right situation just for you. Okay? So before I really get to my thing, I always like to give everybody what the current marketplace is going, what's happening um, with the economy. Right now, the Dow Jones is up 17%. So if you didn't have the money in the Dow Jones, Dow Jones average right now, you're getting a 70, over 17%. And remember, that does not include your dividends. So right now, this is one of the best years we have seen since 1998 in the stock market. Also, starting October 1st, even if you were in all the big rallies, a lot of talk have, where I've been taking tons of classes and meetings have been discussing also. Obamacare is officially open. So it's great for the people who have not, can I get health insurance? That finally allows them to get health insurance starting January 1st. But you can enroll now with it. One thing also, if you, if you did not get the news today, college tuition right now, it has its lowest growth rate since 1975, which is a huge thing. Because if you remember college in the last couple years, the price has been growing and growing, where it actually been outpacing inflation so much that it hurting the middle class to pay and afford for college. Right now, if you go to Cal Berkeley, it's 25000 which is a public university. Right? You hear about the private institutions, the for-profit private institutions who are going to school or people going there and can't get out of debt going to the schools. So this might be a good turn right now towards college tuition is going more at a pace where people can actually afford to go to college without paying for so much of student debt or being a super athlete or a super smart person who got a full ride scholarship. The finalists of the middle class that came into smart who's just trying to get better in life have a chance with this lower pace with it. One thing also I want to tell people a couple of things we have to look at though. Social Security payments in 2014 only go up 1.5%. So if you're a retiree and you retire, your Social Security payments only go up 1.5% because of the CPI index. Which is a huge thing because, as we all know, we're going to talk about a little bit further. Inflation is higher than that, so you're going to see a lot more, uh, a lot more seniors hurting or, or have pension in their pockets and count their pocketbooks. And so, the younger people might have to help out your moms and dads a little further because of only 1.5 percent inflation rate with the spiking different things that are happening. And last but not least, everybody can hear about the debt ceiling. We know in January, we're going to probably get January, February, March sometime, we're going to hit the debt ceiling again. And based off what happens with that, it's going to affect our economy and our credit rating as the United States on how we pay for credit, which is a huge thing. So I always say that so when I tell people, it's not how much something is worth, it's how much money you put in your pocket on a continuous basis, on a monthly basis. Right? We all have people who, we all hear about the lot of stories where somebody made a hundred million, fifty million dollars, and like that, the money disappeared, it's gone, it's broke, and it's probably in worse shape than what they started off with, but now they're in total debt. So the key is that how can you get a consistent cash flow basis where every month 
If you have enough cash flow to pay for your bills and have some more for you to enjoy your grandkids, your family, go on vacation, and so on and so forth. So I always say it's not how much something is worth, it's how much stuff it actually puts in your pocket. So what's the five things that deflate your retirement plans and dreams of retirement? One thing is not savings enough. Right now, we know as a society, people have a lack of savings in America, and it has been killing us as a society. All right? And if you read a report today, you have more and more baby boomers who say they going to live, going to work until they die. Which is a crazy situation when you think about that as we get older and older as a society. And with health, you know, people are living longer. Number two is sickness. Right? We all know somebody who had cancer before. We all know somebody who had a stroke before. And just with that, even bouncing back from that, sickness can definitely kill our retirement dreams. Number three is inflation. Right? We all know inflation, how much is that worth today, how much is going to be worth down the road. Fourth thing is wrong approach to investing. Five is debt, which we all know America has a problem with all this thing, this thing, this thing, not saving, putting everything on credit cards. And the last thing is taxes, which I think is going to be an ongoing issue on how we tap or plan for taxes down the road with certain situations that are happening right now in our society. So let's first of all, well, let's talk about not saving enough right now in America. Right now, the average 401k plan right now has about $75,900. But the rule of thumb is that we're supposed to save 10 to 15% of our retirement income. But right now, as Americans, we're not even saving 10 to 15% overall into savings or retirement. So we have to look at, we have to remember to get back to the basics of just saving 10 to 15% of our annual income. And right now, also, with the problem with America, not just that we're not savings enough, is that how we save our saving ways and our traditional ways of saving has gone away. We have no more how employers are getting rid of the matching programs that they once and will have. Or if you heard about IBM last year, they say if you retire before December, then they're not or leave the company, they were not going to give you your retirement money for the whole year for your 401k plan. Which means this. Now along, you can't rely on your players so much. And we hear that more and more now. If you hear every union strike right now, there's one thing that they're talking about, two things. Pensions and health care. So, and this is going to be a battle that we want to see throughout our country. Like, who responsibility is for our own retirement? Is it our employer? Is it a government entity? Or is it ourselves? And this is a battle that America will see. And we're going to see more and more strikes, I believe, going down the road. So I always try to tell people, as our benefits and our pension has gone away, we have to take more personal responsibility and start saving more for our own retirement. Let's look at the second thing, how illness kills retirement. How many of you guys have a family member who ever had a stroke before, right? Or you got sick for over 90 days? Question, what happens to that person when they get sick? Who, what happens to that mortgage when they get sick? One of the biggest things that we have right now in America is that our pension, when our number one reason we fought for bankruptcy is because of health care. And even with Obamacare, or the number one reason I think it's still going to be because of health care is why we might have to file for bankruptcy. So when you look at retirement plans, what? I get hurt. If I eat anything, I'm not going to be able to work for over 90 days. How do I survive as when I have to ask somebody to take care of me? Do I have the proper income, income protection in place just in case I do get sick? Right? And one thing when we look at retirement plan also is, and health insurance always goes up. Right? How many of you guys remember who are older remember when health insurance was probably a hundred dollars? Right? I know I got my health insurance notice this week and uh, my insurance is going to double, right? From a hundred, you know, hundred and thirty to now it's over two hundred. Thirty now? Huh? Thirty now? Not just not just now older, but because also Huh? You got monthly premium of two hundred and thirty? Dude, where are you getting that? I'm younger. I'm younger, so I'm younger than you. So uh, we sometimes the health insurance I get with a discount. <laughs> but at the same time, you look at the rates are always increasing no matter what. And if you ever hear somebody older, they're always complaining about my prescription pills. Ask your great grandmother what she complains about all the time. My prescription pills, I gotta go to Walmart, I gotta pay for this prescription, my doctor always gives me this new prescription. And so we have to realize that when we do our retirement, is how we want to pay for our medicine and our health care when we retire. All right. And the last thing I always tell people when we look at that with the number one reason for file for bankruptcy and sicknesses, 
So how are you going to pay for health care? Right? A lot of people have been asking about how Obamacare plays into uh, as far as the sickness. The good thing about Obamacare now is everyone can get health insurance, which is the biggest thing that we want. And even though the, the computer system has glitches and Social Security, you might not your Social Security might pop up correctly, your might be thing. You can get health insurance as guaranteed starting next year, which is a huge thing for somebody who cannot get health insurance. Because more than likely, the person who can't get health insurance is a person who's probably already sick. And that person probably filing sick is going to probably be the person who filed going to probably file for bankruptcy. And we don't want more and more people file for bankruptcy because that means there's less and less cash that's in our society. And there's less cash in our society, there's less cash flow that's going around, and we need cash circulating. Okay. How many of you guys remember when gasoline was $1.50? Ah, ah, ah. Well, no, right. No, we can drive it back to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Hey, what am I asking now? Okay, okay, my page. Okay. You guys have to take people to Bay Point Park. $5, I'd be good. How many of you guys remember when cable was less than $20 a month? Right? Oh, yeah. Now you can't even get a cable now for 100 bucks with the phone and everything else with almost $2. And remember, you can buy Frosted Flakes for less than a dollar. And now if you go to the grocery store, I love Frosted Flakes after I work out. Right? But that bot has got smaller and smaller over time. Then the price is going up. And if you notice when you go to the grocery store, everything you buy now is in smaller packages, but the price still stays the same. Right? All that is because of one thing inflation. Right? And if we don't plan correctly for a week we have, you get like you say, I got a million dollars, I got this amount of money, I put out make the mattress. The problem is that money's not working for you for inflation. So next year, when that box of cereal goes up, or that package goes down, the box goes bigger, it's going to cost a little bit more. And then with inflation, everything constantly goes up. And so when you look at retirement plan, you have to consider how is inflation going to be down the road, right? So you can't just put your money in, just as all your money, and just try to save it as possible, and say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to avoid all risk. Because the risk that we forget the most is inflation. And right now, as a society, I personally believe that we have a lot more hyperinflation than what the government gives us, right? Because right now, you have to, even though they say the CPI is 1.5%, there's, because of QE2 and QE3, there's more money circulating in our, in our society more than ever. So cost of goods has risen up. Coffee has gone up. I'm a big coffee drinker. I'm a coffee kind of sort. Coffee has gone up drastically, right? PGE bill has gone, gone up drastically. So all this is going up. So we look at retirement, we have to not just be so safe and avoid the risk of the downturn in the market that we might see in 08 and 01. We also have to consider one of the other risks that we fail to realize, which is inflation. So when we look at retirement, we have to look at inflation. And the last, and the next thing is not being balanced right, right? How many of you guys remember October 2008? Oh. You know, I see, I see people where who was about to retire, market dropped 40, 50%. Right. 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 And you see those same people can't get a job, right? And even as a society, we say, oh, people are living old, a little bit longer. But well, who's going to actually hire old people? Let's be honest. I mean, the U.S. do not like hiring old people. It's a fact of life. Walmart man. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and Walmart does, but you know what? Walmart just put a life insurance policy on you when you pass away. It's like this. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, right? That's yeah. That's yeah. But as a society, right, you might, or if you're one of those people, if you were about to right, the market down, as soon as you retire, you want to go back to work in, instead of making 100 grand, you was used to making money, you can work for 36000 which is a sad thing. And that's all because you're not balanced correctly. So when we look at a retirement plan, we have to look at how can we be balanced correctly. Yeah, we don't want to be too regressive and too risky at certain points, or we don't want to be too safe because of inflation. We have to have the proper balance when we look at our portfolio to make sure that we're not too aggressive. So when there's bad terms, or we're just in one stock and there's a bad term for it, where we don't want to be too safe where we're losing our power of inflation, we just don't have enough money saved because we just was being way too safe and conservative throughout the years. So when we look at things, we always want to look at where is our balance so we can have enough to be conservative enough and, be enough and also be aggressive as much as we need to to reach our goals. And the last thing, which I love talking about lately, is taxes. Right now, if we can sell taxes from the, right now for the federal income tax levels, it's probably the lowest that they have been historically wise. But right now, we're starting to see taxes that have been creeping up slowly but surely. 
right? You see that with the state right now, right? The state last year raised the state sales tax for higher income levels over above 250, they had to pay higher income tax. We see that with the Medicare tax. And right now with our debt levels, the way that they are right now in our country, which is huge, which is a huge, it's huge, right? When you hear that a lot, especially when you heard about the gridlocking government shutting down about so much of our debt for Republicans, we have to look at how taxes are going to be when we retire because the biggest pillar of wealth is taxes. We all work three months out of the year just to pay Uncle Sam. And we all have to consider right now with so much debt level that the continuation of taxes probably will have to go up down the road. So when we look at retirement plan, we have to look at not just how much I have in my 4K plan, my IRA, but how much I'm going to actually have in my pocket after taxes. Because taxes fluctuate, taxes go down, taxes could go up. And we also have to look at retirement plan. When I do retire, what tax deductions do I have? Are you going to have your home as a tax deduction? Maybe you're a very good person who's in your house and was very conservative. I don't have that home, the home uh, tax credit no more. Or if, you don't, if your kids are at the house and you're not taking care of your grandkids, you probably lost that child tax credit. So when you look at retirement plans, like what can I do to properly plan for taxes during my retirement? Right? And here's a couple of things you guys can do. Right? One thing is you can't contribute to your Roth IRA. And there are income limits and contributions towards it. So if you're a single person and doing pretty well in life, if you make over 110000 you can't contribute to your Roth IRA. Um, also, another thing is that you can do a Roth IRA conversion, which is starting to become more and more popular, which means you're switching your regular IRA and you're converting it over to a Roth IRA, which is a great thing because now that money's going to be all tax-free. But all I'd like to give people the warning of that is when you convert it, you're going to have to pay taxes on the person that you convert out of your own pocket because you never pay taxes from the, in the beginning. So recognize that when you do your conversion. And if you're below 59 and a half, you cannot pull out the money out of your IRA, then you're going to have to put it out of your own pocket. The third thing is cash value life insurance, where if you have a policy set up properly, you can have that, it can grow and grow, grow. Eventually, you can pull it out tax free. You can pull out your base policy, like the premiums you put in tax free, and then you pull it out as all loans, just like a home equity line of credit, I would say. Right or refinance your house. And the last thing is municipal bonds. Municipal bonds, if you don't know what municipal bonds are, is when you let the city, state, county, or any public entity or public works borrow your money and they pay you interest on that. So for instance, how many of you guys want the Raiders to play? Oh, yeah. Right? There's probably going to be a bond measure in a couple of years for, for the Oakland Raiders. When that happens, you, you give them some money, you want to give your interest payments for that. And those interest payments is going to be all tax free. But more and more, as our government entities have issues like Detroit, right, Stockton, Bakersfield, you want to make sure that you talk properly picking the right municipal bonds and looking at the credit rate in the financials of those cities. Because one thing you see, especially with the courts right now with the Stockton is, who do you pay? Do you pay the bondholders or do you pay the pensions? And more and more right now, if you look at what's happening now, Cal Porsche is suing cities left and right who are at Bakersfield right now, in Stockton, because of their investments and what's happening with their pension. Because even with the pension right now, we say, hey, during bankruptcy, the pension comes to people like, I want my money, I want my money. Municipal bonds are like, you ain't debt to us. You borrow our money, right? A bond is borrowing money. We want our money. So with that, I always tell people, be careful what type of bond you do. Look at the credit worthiness and the strength of that city or public utility that you have. Yeah, the great thing about your 401k plan, Roth, and all some people, if your company does supply a Roth 401k plan, you can borrow from that, which is a huge thing compared to your regular, uh, regular Roth IRA. But with your regular, with your regular Roth IRA, after five years, you can't pull out the basis of it, not the growth of it, all tax free as well, which is a great thing. So instead of you just think that your money always saves you 59 and a half, great thing about our retirement plan is that we a little more flexibility. So if you're one of the successful, highly rich people, now you can start playing out your money before you're 59 and a half, and you don't have to wait for the government to tell you that you have to wait until you're 60 to pull out your money, which is a great thing, as far as just your basics. But, and so right now, with me believing that tax rates are going to go up in the future, I have no doubt about it, right? I think debt levels are going to go, if our debt levels, I think right now we are in a welfare state where, if you heard about McDonald's, you guys hear about the article about McDonald's today? Right? So McDonald's have a hotline for their employees to show them how they can get food stamps. 
Yes. Right, for the one that has an HR number. Which means this, McDonald's know they're not paying their employees enough. Exactly, when they want to strike right. 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 When they're not paying them enough, that means the government is subsidizing them for, for they're not paying their employees enough. Which means if the government is subsidizing them, that means we're subsidizing McDonald's. Which, means, which is the issue of this. If all these government agencies, right, GE didn't pay no taxes last year, Verizon paid no taxes last year, everybody in America, from corporate all the way down, is getting subsidized some way or some fashion in our society, eventually they're going to have to pay the money back because it's a credit card. And we have a big credit card in the United States. So with that saying is, I believe eventually when we pay it back, the easy way to do that as a government, as a society, is to raise revenue. And we're starting to see that now with Medicare, where they have now the 3.8% tax on it. We see that also with, um, with the state of California, where now we have great sales tax last year. You're going to start seeing more feeding of taxes. And they might not just call, oh, we're raising taxes, income taxes, but they just raising taxes some way. How many of you guys got to take an open label? Oh, of course. All right? It used to be 30 something dollars. Now it's about, what, 60, $60, right? Too much. Right? Which means that is nothing but another fee or a tax. Or the plastic bag, which is nothing but another flat tax. So no matter what, even though they might not call it income tax in the city, you are raising, trying to raise taxes. To dodge and get ready for a needed extra revenue. And you can see that with the post office. The post office is about to raise more stamps, raise the price of stamps. And even with raising the price of stamps, they still have not have enough money to pay for the health care bill that they couldn't pay last month. Right? They couldn't pay the health care bill. Post office. And so even when they keep raising stamps, and Jay raising will raise stamps again. So you want to keep raising them because they can't compete with technology. Right? Exactly. And, then, and so that's going to be a battle. And we're going to see who, who, what, what rights are we willing to give up and where we're willing to pay for our society. And if we still want to pay for, for our greatness, our pleasures, and the great things. As a society, we're going to have to start paying for those things down the road. Because eventually, China and Japan are going to want more money from us than what they're getting. So we have to just start paying for that. So here's my idea of retirement portfolio for people. And when I look at this, this is not look at the risk management portion of it, and I say risk management, I mean something happens to me that you protect it, which means everybody should have health insurance, bottom line, no one reason for bankruptcy. Everybody should have auto insurance, right? But then after that, you should have emergency fund. You should have three to six months of emergency, because things happen all the time, right? You drive one day, you don't have the money in your emergency, you hit a pothole, you got to get you tired, and you're broke, and you got to use a credit card. You don't want to be the person who has the debt, so you need emergency savings. And then you also need life insurance protection, family, and income protection. But after we get that, here's the way where you, where you start building wealth. And my job is to help you build wealth, grow it, and sustain it. So the first thing, if you're old and lucky, or you're just a state or government employee, you have a guaranteed money, which is your social security or pension plan. Which means no matter what you're doing in life, you're going to get that money guaranteed as long as you keep working. Right? So if you're, if you're a teacher, you've got CalSTRS. If you're a city of Oakland employee or a city or any other entity, for the most part, you have CalPERS besides a couple of different counties and cities within the state of California. The second thing is your taxable money, which means you've got any tax deduction now. The money's going tax deferred, but when you pull the out all the money we do to retire, the money's going to be all taxed. The third thing is your tax free account. And then the tax free account we're talking about is your full Roth 401k plan or your Roth IRA, which means you need to get the tax deduction now. But that money be going tax deferred, and now when you plug that money, it's going, to be, it's going to be all tax free. The next one is going to be your tax free guarantee money, which, which we use a lot of times is using it as life insurance, where it has a guarantee of stream of income that comes to you after you desire when you retire. And the last thing which you guys want to hear further about is real estate. I think everybody to have a true diverse portfolio should have some type of real estate in their portfolio for you to have a true balance with it. Because there are downturns and no growth in the stock market. I don't care what anybody says that it does happen. You see that in the 70s, you see the include inflation. And there's downturns in all, in all markets and instruments. So the key is how to be truly balanced. And I think one way is that is with real estate. So we'll slip over that because of time strength. And if you guys have any other questions, here's my information. Thank you so much. Well, quick one on the, uh, I always ask you about the cash value life insurance. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. to that, because that's what I got, right? Um, 
But I, I, I thought it was a good way to get a guaranteed return, right. you know, but also to beat inflation. But also, if if ever you know I need to you know, maybe borrow against it and maybe invest in a piece of property or do whatever, it had that it had that uh, benefit. Talk about that for a quick second in terms of what you can do with the capital. Okay, so, so you, you build up some cash in your policy, right? You can good, you can inside your policy. That money is yours. There's no. There's no IRS or tax code that says you cannot pull out that cash. So when you pull out that cash, what you do is you pull out, first pull out your cash system, which is your your basis, which is the money that you contribute inside as a policy. And then after that, you can pull out your gain, which is all tax-free. And the reason that is, it's almost like you uh, pulling out equity out of your home. When you pull out equity out of your home, it's considered a loan. Same thing. That loan will have to be paid back until you die, which is a huge thing. Right? So you don't have to pay back when you live in debt, so who cares? Right? And then afterwards, it's just subtracted from your death benefit, which is a lot more than when you grow inside that policy. Jason, as I understand the cash value life policy, you haven't actually removed your own money. You're being loaned against that money. So your policy, that full amount, is still gaining whatever, you know, based on whatever it's invested. Correct. That's, is that correct? Correct. But you're right, correct. So you play your so you've got this kind of double gain on right. you know, whatever you pulled out and right. you're investing in it. Right, you can pull out that money, right. Because when you, you pull out your basis, but there's a short when you start doing the calculations of it, and then as the growth of it, it will still grow as well with the growth. I got a question about the Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. um, is it still, what's, what's the, uh, the maximum amount you can put in every year? I mean, if we just investing in it? So no problem. If you just invest in it, it, below 50 is five grand a year. Five grand a year, okay. Right. If you're above 50, it's now six grand a year if you're oh, above 60. Okay. Personally, if you're family, so if you're married, you actually have open up two accounts. So that can be a total of if you're below 50, 10 grand a year. But the government loves corporations, hates individuals. So, if you have a business, you're better off developing your own self-directed 401k, a qualified retirement plan, you know, if you can't right. qualify for that. And you can even, you don't even need to be uh, an entity for that, you can actually do that as a um, sole proprietorship. You do a sole proprietorship and you put 25% of your income inside of it, then you convert on down the road if you want to. Thank you. It's a little more complicated, but it's a great idea. I just want to add this year, it actually the Roth went up $500. Probably uh, $6,500. Oh, probably $6,500. Oh, yeah. 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 Question, if you do that, it turns us a lot of uh, retirement programs out that you can't discriminate between executives and the employees. So are you trying to minimize the number of employees so that you don't have to do that to all of them? Otherwise, you defeat your purpose. For the life insurance? Uh, yeah, no, for the uh, for the other plan in terms of the retirement plan where you correct it would be twenty five percent. If you have, if you have more employees and you do a four K plan, you have to offer that to all your employees. You right. cannot discriminate. Right. So yeah, you cannot. That's the only thing. If you have a lot of employees, you cannot discriminate because of risk laws. So what you want to do for one person, you can do for others with that, unless you do some um, non qualified plans, and then you have a lot more flexibilities with non qualified plans. A qualified plan to mean that they don't get the tax benefit. Or you get the tax benefit, benefits, so you do like a Zegler bonus plan for a few of your employees. Okay. You can do a key man policy. Okay. And after that, and you can see that a lot with major corporations where they might say, I'm just going to pick you and you. Well, come here, we're going to give you extra, you know, 10, 20, 50 grand, and you do it that way. And everybody else has just a 401k plan. And then we're going to have a five minute recess. Grab some more wine or birds that we set up for a bill for a bill teller or attorney. All right. Thank you guys.